whatever, whatever, I'm filming, we're filming. Action. Hi, and welcome back to Phone Photography Pro. Today I'm going to talk about eight basic composition styles that every photographer should know. I think I can pretty easily argue that composition is the number one thing that makes or breaks a photograph. You can have all the skills, all the tech, all the gear, but if you don't know how to do a basic composition, then like, what do you know? So, let's get through these eight styles that you can put into practice right away. So, first composition style is called center of interest. It is exactly what it sounds like, but you place your subject in the middle of the picture. In this case, I have my dog in the middle of the trail, which is in the middle of the picture, which is framed by trees, so everything is pointing to the center. Um, the other image, I have a snowy street, and this could count as leading lines too, which we'll get into, but um, everything is about the middle of the image, essentially for center of interest. Okay, so second composition style is called angle or camera angles. You're essentially paying attention to your point of view. Where are you at? It's really important when you're a photographer and you're composing an image to move your body. Like don't just always hold it right here at your eye level without like getting on the ground, getting above something, look in all different directions. If you wanna work specifically on camera angle, check out my blog post, which I'll link in the description below, called the Point of View Scavenger Hunt, and it gives you like a ton of different angles to shoot from it can be really fun I usually have my photo students do that um, as one of their first couple projects all right composition style number three is called leading lines leading lines is um, lines are an element of art if you don't know that you should definitely check out elements of art because they're foundational to all mediums um, but line is something in the photograph that directs your eye, right? You're gonna follow that line wherever it goes. It usually starts in a corner and winds its way back into the photograph. So when you're shooting for leading lines, make sure that all the lines go into the photograph. And if you have a main subject, make sure that they're pointing towards that main subject. Leading lines are really easy to find. They could be a sidewalk, they could be a shadow, they could be like the edge of a wave, they could be, I have that image of the library in Ireland, right? So look around you for leading lines. It's really easy to find if you're shooting architecture, but leading lines are going to immediately change your composition if you're paying attention to the direction that things go. Number four, the rule of thirds. So, so, so important. The rule of thirds is essentially a grid and it states that you never have something in the center. So we're going away from composition number one and we're trying something new and making sure that your subject, your main focus is not in the center. An easy way to do this is to just flip the grid on on your camera setting on your phone. You can set it on your DSLR, whatever device you happen to be working from, turn that on and use the intersecting lines to place your subject for um, a different kind of emphasis. It definitely draws your eyes one way or the other, um, but rule of thirds is really important and definitely something that you should be trying to use when you're taking images. So flip that grid on in your device and get started with the rule of thirds. A composition style number five is a framing the scene. So for this, you wanna make sure that you have something on the edges of your image it's really easy to find in nature. A lot of times you can get a tree or something to come through the sky and get um, it to frame your subject. So framing your subject can be really cool. I have this image here where I shot at the beach and I just shot through a stump stick, stump stick thing that I found and it automatically framed the scene for me. So you should definitely be looking for things like that. Okay, so composition style number six is a non-distracting background. That means get rid, get rid of it, get rid of all that stuff that is behind your main subject. You want to make sure that you don't have a lot of things laying around because it'll just detract from your image overall. 
Um, an easy way to do this, let's say you're outside and you can't remove things in the background, you can flip on portrait mode on most of your smartphone devices. You can find an app that allows you to blur the background so that it's not distracting. Um, I think this can be really powerful. The use of bokeh is really powerful. That's what that blurred effect is. If you don't know how to do that or don't have control over your camera phone, I'll link a video below where I talk about all of the controls in your camera and that way you can have a little bit more of a hold and control and then you can change things like that with the non-distracting background. Composition style number seven I call scale and proportion. It's just about playing with the size of objects in your images. Um, the most common that I see now, especially like in the groups that I'm in, which is a lot of wilderness culture and hikers and people who are outside a lot, is like a really small human figure in a very giant landscape. So you're playing with scale and proportion in order to emphasize how huge the world is or how much there is to discover and then your presence in it. Right? So that would be one way. Um, a photographer to look up for scale and proportion is William Eggleston. He is amazing and if you go to this blog post that has this video I, I've linked him in there and he's got some really funky cool scale proportion images that are always awesome so play with scale and proportion play with how can I make this look bigger than it really is how can I make it look smaller than it really is it can change how your images look final composition style number eight is about motion and motion can be real or implied so you can capture real motion like someone running or jumping um, or you can have implied motion and I know that that can sound a little bit confusing but let's start with real motion what we're familiar with including motion in your photographs can be a huge asset you can make things feel more alive obviously if they're moving you can also slow down motion if you want to learn how to slow down a waterfall I'll also link that tutorial below as well but motion is important now when you're shooting real motion make sure you leave space Space around a motion picture is so important. If you cram someone in who's like running really fast and you give nothing before them or nothing behind them, we don't have a narrative of them moving, right? So to imply motion, if they're going one direction and you wanna leave space behind them, then it'll look like they're moving quickly. If they're going another direction, you can leave space in front of them, like, oh, they have such a long ways to go. So pay attention to the space up around your real motion images especially like let's say you go to the skate park and you're gonna capture someone on their skateboard doing a trick make sure you leave space at the bottom or the top and that can really emphasize what they're doing also change your point of view or your angle like lay on the ground to even emphasize it even more okay so that's real motion so implied motion in images is more on the um, principles, principles of design side, right? So implied motion is the way that things line up, the way they cascade in order to move our eye through an image. So it could be that you have lined up objects so that our eyes move quickly through the image, or maybe they're not lined up and it's totally chaotic and you move your eyes to the image in another way. So implied motion is an important concept. It's challenging to grasp. It's definitely a little bit more consumption conceptual but think about it um, with your pictures if you haven't ever shot motion before get out there and shoot some motion because it will change your images and that is all my friends that is the eight composition styles remember you have nothing if you don't have composition first pay attention to what's around your subject it will change everything pay attention to where you're placing things as a photographer you are now working in a rectangle or maybe a square and you need to pay attention to all the elements that are within that space that is how you master photography and with that my friends don't forget to like this video uh, subscribe and check out my blog, phonephotographypro.com, for more tips, tricks, travel, exploration, and of course, all of that awesome blog post stuff. And I will see you guys later. Bye!